Ready? Okay. Hi, my name is Rahul Berry, and I'm a translator from Portuguese and Spanish into English. Oh, I'm, I'm Simone Campos. Uh, I'm the author of Nothing Can Hurt You Now. Hi. <laughs> and it's I'm out here. on February the 3rd, 2nd, with Pushkin Vertigo, and this is the Brazilian original edition. Yep. Um, we're going to read a very short section in Portuguese first and then in English. Um, basically, um, in this section, the one of the two protagonists, the two sisters called Lucinda and Viviana. Um, Viviana has been um, kidnapped. She doesn't know exactly where it's somewhere in the countryside near Rio or Sao Paulo or Minas Gerais in kind of, you know, southern Brazil. Um, and she has been locked in a bathroom in this big ranch where she's been kidnapped by uh, actually somebody who she knows quite well or not. But has met a few times before a guy called David. Yep. Simone. Ok, let's start. De repente, houve barulho de chave na fechadura. A porta estalou, se abrindo, e Davi entrou, me olhando de esguelha. Ele trancou a porta e guardou a chave no bolso. Continuei sentada na tampa do vaso sanitário enquanto isso. Ele se aproximou da pia e removeu o pesado espelho antigo que ficava acima dela. Colocou-o no chão cuidadosamente... Abriu o armário sobre a pia, olhou tudo lá dentro, depois fechou. Tentou abrir o armário do canto, nada, estava trancado. Olhou para o alto, para o pequeno luxo de banheiro. Inspecionou a lixeira, pegou dali os pedaços da corda com a qual César havia amarrado minhas mãos e enfiou no bolso. Olhou dentro do bloco do box de acrílico, onde havia apenas um frasco de shampoo vencido e um sabonete ressecado em um suporte de metal enferrujado pendurado no registro do chuveiro elétrico. Davi pegou o suporte com shampoo, condicionador e sabonete e deixou do lado do espelho. Olhou para a janela basculante lá em cima, sem parecer se preocupar com ela. Por fim, correu os olhos pelo banheiro todo e se deu por satisfeito. Nada vai acontecer com você, assegurou ele. Fica tranquila. Atônita... Eu o observei sair, levando o espelho e o suporte de shampoo e me trancar de novo naquele lugar gelado. Me pareceram mais medidas anti-suicídio do que precaução para eu não usar nada daquilo para fugir. Não tinha restado nada que eu pudesse usar para me machucar. Era revelador que ele achasse isso uma possibilidade. Na cabeça dele, eu poderia me matar por desespero, por não conseguir escapar. Ou então para atingi-lo, já que acreditava que eu o odiava. O interessante era ele acreditar que eu me mataria por causa dele. Constatei que o raciocínio de Davi era simples, na verdade. Até o Hamlet do agronegócio queria sua férias. Se na cabeça dele eu era sua alma gêmea, eu também só podia ser uma alma torturada, igual a ele. E agiria do mesmo modo que ele talvez tivesse agido um dia. Que baita narcisista. Um, and here's English. Um, suddenly I heard the key in the lock. Then the door creaked open and Davi entered looking at me slightly. <clears throat> he locked the door and put the key in his pocket. I remained seated on the toilet lid the whole time. He went over to the sink and removed the heavy old mirror above it. He placed it carefully on the door. He opened the cupboard below the sink, inspected everything inside and then closed it. He tried to open the cupboard in the corner, no luck, locked. He looked up at the small chandelier. He inspected the bin and took from it the bits of rope with which Cesar had tied my hands and put them in his pocket. He looked inside the shower door where there was only an expired shampoo bottle and a dried up bar of soap in a rusty metal holder hanging from the tap of an electric shower. Davi picked up the holder with the shampoo, conditioner and soap and left it next to the mirror. He looked a lot at the tilting window up high without appearing to be bothered by it. Finally, he ran his eyes across the entire bathroom and seemed satisfied. Nothing can hurt you now, he assured me. Rest easy. Gobsmacked, I watched him leave, taking the mirror and the shampoo holder with him, and locking me once more in that freezing room. They looked more like anti-suicide measures to me than precautions to stop me from using any of those items to escape. There was nothing left that I could use to hurt myself with. It was very revealing that he had considered this a possibility. In his head, I might kill myself out of desperation for not being able to escape. Or maybe to hurt him, since he already believed I hated him. What was interesting was that he believed I would kill myself because of him. I realized that, essentially, Davi's reasoning was very simple. Even the hamlet of agribusiness had to have his Ophelia. If, in his head, I was his soulmate, then I had to be a tortured soul, just like him. 
And I would act in the same way he must have acted at times. What a massive narcissist. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoy the book. <laughs>